This is our Forex blog for October 1st, 2012. And the first step of our three-step Forex trading system is to use our currency meter and see which currencies are statistically strongest and weakest, and then buy the strongest ones versus the weak, or sell the weakest versus the strong, depending on which one's on top or bottom. Sort the currency meter, and you can see the Australian, Euro, and Swiss are the strongest three. Yen, pound, and dollar are the weakest. And our real-time trend strengths on the top Underneath that, we have the 15-minute trend, hourly, daily, weekly, monthly. Obviously, the more time frame trends that line up, in other words, the Swiss and the Euro, is a better bet by buying than the Australian. Even though the Australian, in real time, might have a little bit more strength than the Euro or the Swiss, the more time frames that are in your favor, the higher the odds of the trade working, the higher the odds of the trade going a decent number of pips. Remember, the only secret to trading, and this is why that currency meter works, is that you want to have bigger wins and losses. If you have uh, $200 wins and $100 losses in our right half the time, you're going to make money. In fact, you're going to make money even at 40% winning. You can be wrong 60, 70% of the time sometimes and still make money if you catch big wins. And obviously on days like today where currencies go one way pretty much all day, you can see the New Zealand pretty much strong all day. And how they use the currency meter is if you see a trend for – and all the time frames line up for two to three hours. Typically, an hour to three hours, you're going to get a pullback, and then that trend's going to resume. So here's a brief amount of time where you got a pullback in the New Zealand at 6 o'clock. You could be anticipating that trend resuming. Now, you can see it only resumed for five minutes and then had another hour of weakness. So, you know, you would have a loss and you get back in that trade, and more than likely, the win's going to be two, three times bigger than what you just lost. Most of the time, when you trade with a momentum, the market moves five or ten pips your way, you can move your stop to break even, and a lot of times you don't even have a loss at all. So let's take a look at the New Zealand here uh, versus the yen, which had a lot of weakness. The 15-minute hourly trend, daily trend was down. The weekly trend shifted down at 6. And even though uh, coming up to 6.30 right here, uh, you can see the yen was strong. If you looked for... Uh, a buy in New Zealand yen around 6.30. You may or may not have had a trade, uh, and if you did, you probably had a loss, but the next trade would have worked. So here's coming up to 6.30, and you can see you know, a little pullback here. If you had got into this trade right there when it broke above the, the trend line over the highs, and you put your bar at your stop underneath the slow, first of all, your risk is about 6, 7 pips. It went up and came back down, you moved your stop in half, you lost five, six pips here. Typically, I'll be a little bit more cautious after uh, having a loss. If it goes down, up, down, can't break that low, I would get in right here. And let's say you got out um, when it comes up here and, and reverses. It's 77, you're in this trade at 69, you made eight pips, pretty much got your loss back. You know, if you got in this trade here, you lost five pips. If you got in this trade right here, you made 20. Uh, overall, with all those trades, you made at least 10, 15 pips. And that's not the best uh, one to even be trading. Let's take a look at earlier in the day when the New Zealand was strong on all time frames, 2.30. Uh, the yen was weak at that time. The pound was uh, even weaker. You can see the weekly trend was down. So let's look at selling the pound New Zealand uh, around uh, 2, 2.30. This is not a currency I typically leave running, so I will... Uh, bring this chart up, and around 2.30, you will see this trended down. You got a pullback here, trended down, and you know when you use a currency meter and you focus on the currencies most trending, you know basically you're looking to get into this on a pullback, or in some cases a sideways uh, consolidation. If any time it goes sideways for half an hour to two hours, the longer the better you short the low. So you might have lost money here, maybe made a few pips, shorted here, made a few pips, shorted here, made 20 pips, and so forth. And this is a five-minute chart. Uh, I vastly prefer range charts. Here's a five pips per bar chart. So instead of five minutes, which is just an arbitrary time frame, you can set any time frame or any number of pips per bar, and you'll, you'll find much better pullback opportunities. You know, uh, this one was trending down pulls back right here. This is a much higher probability, and you're risking five pips plus, you know, the spread plus a pip or two padding, and you can see when it starts going down, you move your stop underneath here. You can easily draw your fibs on this, 
and notice it went almost to the pip to the 1.618 in reverse. So if you were short this around uh, 57, you get out of this down here around 20. You made almost 40 pips on that trade while risking only 8. Let's just round up our risks to 10 pips. You made four times more profit on that trade than what your risk was. So, you know, that's really the key to trading. You can see the Swiss was also very strong, uh, selling the pound versus a very, uh, the weak pound versus a strong Swiss. Made sense. Let's take a look at this. We'll put on a five pips per bar chart. And the Swiss, let's scroll back and look at the Swiss. It was pretty much strong uh, until about 10. So if you look at this chart here, um, this is a good example of a sideways rectangle pattern. Anytime a market goes down and then goes sideways without any kind of pullback at all, that's a trend that's very likely to go, especially at the beginning of a new trend. You pretty much have, you know, multiple patterns uh, like that in this currency. Uh, if you don't wait at least 30 minutes, you'll have more losses. And you can see it went down, down, and typically I will trade with the trend uh, until it moves three waves. So you draw your FIPS off those the first two waves down, and usually this is going to be the end of the trend. You can see it tried to go lower, tried to go lower, but for the most part, you know, that third wave down was pretty much the end of the move. So if you miss the first wave down or the second wave down and you um, see the market down here and you continue to try to sell it, uh, you're going to need a, a much deeper pullback. Uh, you know, and typically what I consider a decent pullback, and I've, I'm coding these into uh, computerized systems, so, you know, I have experience in reducing uh, the losses, and that's by just simply counting the number of bars. When the market's gone down too far, wait for a 15 or 20 bars uh, above this fast five-minute moving average shifted two bars to the right using our digital signal processing. So. Uh, when it came down, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 is the very minimum. I'd wait for a pullback and kind of wait for it to go underneath that bar's low. So that would be right here. And you can see it went up a little bit more. There's a the bar, uh, down bar right there. You move your entry into it right here. And you get short with your stop right above the high. And don't be greedy. You know, again, this thing's already gone down a lot. It's probably going to reverse down there when it comes down and goes back above the moving average. You're out here at 28. You'd be short this at 43. Uh, you made 15 pips, and, you know, that's pretty much the end of the move. I wouldn't take this pullback here. It's only above that moving average four bars, whereas here it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And when it goes below these lows, at least then you have a small profit. comes back up. I'd be very hesitant here to short, but when it, again, goes at least 30 minutes here sideways and it can't go above that high, you short. The, the real secret to trading is, you know, obviously use our tools, use Fibonacci's, use trend lines, use... Uh, if you can't recognize uh, a trend line on the chart, uh, use our digital signal processing based uh, method. The farther down it goes, you know, wait at least 10 bars over the moving average, and it doesn't have to be all at the same time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. At this point, you're starting length for sales. Even if you had a small loss right here and you got back in and made 15 pips, you know, you have a profit over those two trades. Now, the euro is very strong today. Let's take a look at it earlier when the dollar was extremely weak. The weekly trend was up on the dollar. The monthly trend was down. The daily trend shifted down. The real-time trend was incredibly down. The vast majority of dollar pairs were going down on the 15 and hourly trend. So obviously buying the strong euro versus the weak dollar made sense. So let's bring up the euro dollar. And you can see on this chart that the trend you know, pretty much just kept going up. And count your waves. Here's your first wave up. Here's your second wave up. And, and trends can go up five waves. And very strong trends, you know, typically will go four waves. But you have one wave up, two waves up, three waves up. Wait for a, a deeper pullback after you have a three wave up. In other words, don't be buying it right here. You might buy right here. You'd have a loss. You buy again right here. You made 10, 20, 30, 40 pips. Uh, let's put our digital signal processing based moving average on here to help you uh, eliminate the lower odds trades. Because really, it's all about statistics and odds. Uh, the farther up it goes, statistically, the more likely it is you know, to pull back, and the deeper a pullback you need. So obviously, this had gone up three waves. This is the fourth wave up. You want at least 10 bars underneath 
the moving average. So one, two, three, four, five. This one's above it. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, perfect number of ten. Uh, it's a decent pullback, and I don't care if it goes down fifteen, but at minimum of ten, the farther up it is. At the beginning of a trend, uh, I typically look for uh, four to six bars pullback. So in other words, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll buy it above this bar's high, right here. And this one right here. One, two, three. And, and unfortunately, it wasn't enough of a pullback. I might have missed this trade, you know, because I like at least 30 minutes of sideways action. Uh, and one of our systems looks for five bars up, down, up, down, without pretty much going above or below that bar's, you know, high or low. That's a little bit harder pattern for new traders to spot. Uh, but, you know, I can teach it to a computer, so I should be able to teach it to you guys. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five bars with pretty much not going above or below each bar's low or high by more than a pip or two. Uh, that's another pattern that I look for uh, in the systems. So hopefully those rules will help you. And, you know, especially at the beginning of a new trend, if you draw your fibs on that first wave, it gives you an idea of where to look for a trade. And if a currency hits the 1.618 fib target, it's significantly strong. Uh, 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 a weak trended currency won't even hit the first one. A decent sized trend will stall and reverse at the first fib target. Very strong currency will will go to the 1.618. So if it goes to the 1.618 of the previous swing, it's more likely to go up. And you, you know, especially if it's the beginning uh, of the first, second, or third wave. So you draw your fibs on the second one here. And notice that this one went above the 1.618. I never buy above the 1.618. You're really going to lose. That's why this trade right here is not a very good trade. Uh, and the farther up it goes, the more likely you're going to get at least a 50% pullback, 38 to 50%. So draw your fibs on the whole thing. This one pulled back real close to the 38%. And you can see it kind of went up, up, up. You draw your fibs on that last wave. Uh, and I'll make these uh, thicker so you can see where that is. Um, Oops, that's the wrong one. I didn't want that one thick. Click on this one right here. And so you can see on that last wave up, wait for at least a 50 to 62% retracement. So here's the 50. How many bars underneath that moving average was it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So on this bar, you, if it went sideways or above that bar, you could buy this bar, this bar. I wait for one green bar up and buy when it goes above there. So obviously this one went up a little bit. You would have moved your stop up. You would have lost five pips. Three more bars down, reversal. Uh, you know, it was still above the 38% the of the whole move. This is where you could put your stop. You could risk a very small 10, 15 pips. And obviously this thing rallies up. It's above our upper containment band. First sign of it stalling, I'd be out somewhere up here in 29.18. You're long here at 83. So you can see, you know, you made 10, 20, about 30 pips on that trade while risking 15. So that's a two times bigger profit than what your risk is. And again, anytime you see a currency that's strong on almost all time frames, uh, you want to buy that against one that's weak on most time frames. And some traders have recently expressed concern that, you know, with all these colors on the chart, they're just getting confused. You have the real trend trend, the 15-minute trend, hourly trend, daily, weekly, monthly. So I'm going to experiment with this and try to come up with one indicator histogram that shows that allows you to weight it yourself, just like this one is. You can weight this in any way you want. FX build your own trend histogram on the top. What I plan to add to this build a trend histogram is uh, further weightings for the daily, weekly, and monthly trend. So the default one, when I experiment with this, it may or may not be an improvement over having multiple time frames. But if it is, I'm probably going to weight the real-time trend 65 70%, and then the daily, weekly, monthly a combined 30%. And you know, you'll be able to look at multiple currencies, and ones like the euro with incredible real-time strength, Daily trend shifts up at 2.30. The weekly and monthly are not that weak, but still show, you know, pretty much close to this 80 level of strength here. Uh, currencies where they're strong on all time frames will probably show, you know, slightly more strength than the euro. And so you'll have just one um, histogram version. I'm hoping that that will help traders 
uh, you know, when you see the pound here, where all the longer time frame trend is down, and a little bit of strength right here, it won't register as much strength because, you know, the daily, weekly, and monthly trends mixed, uh, it would show this would probably look something like this, and the weakness would be, you know, a lot more, and you'll be able to identify. Obviously, if you sell the pound today versus the euro or the Swiss, let's take a look at the euro pound. It's obviously going to be going up because the euro was strong and the pound was weak, and, you know, pretty much straight up all day, as you can see. Uh, you only had one little pullback here. And sometimes with currencies that don't move that many pips, the low to the high here is about 55 pips. You might go down to something like a 4 pips per bar instead of uh, 5. The more volatile it is, the more pips per bar you want. Uh, in fact, and this one's so uh, non-volatile, it might even go down to 3 pips per bar. And that way you can see these little pullbacks and get in, out, in, out, in, out um, for smaller pip moves. So that's it for today's class. Keep in mind, uh, draw trend lines, use the Fibonacci profit targets, uh, count the waves. Strong trends go up anywhere from three to five waves. After four waves up, be very, very cautious uh, and wait for you know 15 to 20 bar pullback. That's 20 bars that go underneath the very fast digital signal processing based moving average.